fantastic Wednesday, first of the month, August. Hey. And it's time for Business Express. Good morning, Rotus. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Uh, ha- happy new month. I think it's so, so corny saying well, that. I, I I've could feel joined, you I've joined them. Your I've joined them. They beat, if you can't beat them, join them. So, <laughs> Lagos, happy new month. Hello. Happy new month. <laughs> uh, Lagos, uh, chat with us. Send us your happy new month messages. I'm um, using the hashtag Business Express 981 up on Twitter or by sending to our WhatsApp number, which is 0809 0981. We are streaming live on YouTube as well. So, a big wave and hello to all our YouTube live viewers hello. out there. Um, and without further ado, I'll let Rotus get into it. Thank you, Fulu. I want to welcome Aroma Sele of Afri Invest. Good morning, sir. Good morning, and welcome to the coolest month of the year. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's your okay, birthday, birthday month. Yeah, 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 yeah. yes. <laughs> it's his birthday see them, month. See them. That's how they used to behave. Oh, my goodness. All right, so the markets, yeah, it's been positive uh, this last couple of days. Again, yesterday, up by 0.19%, 37,017. 0.78 points is where we closed. Like I said, uh, July was going to be uh, uh, negative. So for July, we're down by 3.2%. For the year, we're still, or oh, 329 uh, For the year, we're down by 3.2 so far. Uh, but the market did relatively well. Consumer goods was the lead sector that was up, uh, buoyed, by, uh, buoyed by Nestle. I don't want to dump on Cadbury again, so I'm not going to talk about <laughs> Nestle's results. But Nestle's results is very good, and they always time it very well. They release it right when Cadbury releases theirs and make them look really bad. But anyway, um, still though, um, we had just 17 gainers yesterday, 24 losers. Uh, Equity Assurance was the top gainer. Como Oil uh, was the top loser. Diamond Bank was in second place on the loser's trust. If we have time, we'll get to their performance, which wasn't very impressive. But first, um, I, you know, Fulu and Kyrie, they already mentioned it during the news. Uh, Ramosele, we have a new chairperson for ECOWAS. Yeah. 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 President, President Buhari. Yes, President yeah. Buhari. Yeah. Yes, congrats <laughs> to him. He's the, he takes over from, I think it was the Togolese president yeah. who was yeah. the last uh, 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 pr- uh, chairperson for ECOWAS. But one of the things, I mean, they said they were going to talk about security, yeah? yeah. But they also said, they were, this, they've been talking about this thing since, I don't know, 1993. The single currency for Africa. They are still on this matter. Apparently, there was a, there was a meeting there. I wish I could be a fly on the wall to hear what they spoke about at the last meeting and what differences they, they included in this new meeting. But your thoughts? What this, Af- this single currency for Africa thing, is it dead in the water? Or is it, it seems like they keep talking about it. What, well, what, well really, it's, it's, it's been going on for, for quite some time now. And yes, uh, we're probably trying to copy the model in, in Europe. Yeah. But if you consider the conditions of the European economies and, and, and the peculiarities of our own African economies, based on the current structure of these markets, it most likely will not work. Mm. It's going to be mm. so challenging. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. in terms of looking at intra-Africa trade, what's the proportion of intra-Africa trade that you that we actually have? I mean, having a single currency is supposed to facilitate things like uh, uh, trade, uh, making it easier for you to get access to certain currencies and eliminate some currency barriers that, mm. that could have existed. But I mean, in, in traffic trade currently, it's still well below uh, uh, 30%. So yeah. it, implementing a single currency now would probably be a challenge. I mean, after I implemented single currency, or in order to implement a single currency, you probably also have to have a central bank. Right. So, so that means we the give African up our own central ahead. bank who. Right who controls liquidity to the market. And I mean, based on the current conditions in the in different economies, I mm. mean, here in Nigeria, currently we're focusing on maintaining exchange rate stability. Right. That, that has been the determining factor for the amount of liquidity that the CBN has allowed into the market. Mm. But I mean, once we adopt a single currency like this, what happens to all these uh, sort, of, sort of plans? Mm. But I mean, I, I feel like it's still a long way off right. for um, 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 for us. Okay. Well, I, I wish they would release the minutes of this meeting because I want to know. They're still talking. The uh, struggle yeah. is lost. Follow your travel buddy. Imagine mm-hmm. you being able to go to uh, who is in Ecowas now, uh, Ivory Coast, for example, mm-hmm. uh, and not having to change to dollars and then change to the. Listen, I'm, so I'm, it would I'm right help. there yeah. with you. Yeah. There's a central bank for the for the entire continent. Then I mean, there are all these uh, these questions that come that, up, that right? Be, that and and we have so many issues, even with just trading across borders or even just flying across borders. Um, um, currencies is a way more complex thing, especially in this age. 
of nationalistic tendencies. Right. Thanks for reminding me. Uh, by the way, we still haven't signed the the African Free, free Continent yeah, yeah, Continental exactly. yeah, Agreement. Well, so I was going to go to okay. that. So we still so, haven't even uh, signed that. If if that was in play, then maybe we could make a stronger argument for adoption of, of single currency. But yeah. I mean, till then, it's not happening. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, let's see now. Uh, pensions. Let's move on to pensions. We have the uh, May 2018 pension fund assets uh, and registration reports. It's it's encouraging. I think uh, we're looking at the number of uh, folks that registered uh, or rather enrolled into the various pension programs. Uh, and Aroma said it looks like the younger folks, uh, our age mates, at least for us here, for are not old now, we were still, we're still, we're still, we're still I'm an youth. elder millennial, that's what they call us. <laughs> elder, elder millennial. <laughs> I'm showing that that group, the, between the, the, the 30 to 49 age bracket, had the largest uh, portion of enrollment. Uh, in pensions yeah yeah i mean it's it's not really surprising in the sense that we we've seen a lot of migration from from um the low income earners to mm. middle income um earners as well also considering the fact that about 50 percent or more there about of the nigerian population is less than i think about 40 uh 40 years old people are like, getting jobs the awareness mm. of the importance of of, of a pension um, is 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 becoming a lot um a lot a, a lot more. Yeah. I mean, an image that I still have in my head right from from childhood when I started hearing about pension as was you'd go to some certain places and you'd see long ass queues right, of right. old people that have right. been coming every day, standing right. under the sun, mm. waiting for their pets. I mean, that that view in 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 your head sort of gives you a better sense of the importance of actually having a yeah, pension. pension right. uh, uh, now you have to have that. Uh, that plan for 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 a future. I mean, your pension shouldn't be the only thing you be hoping to depend on right, in, right. In, in in the future. But I mean, it's nice to have that uh, that mm. at the back of uh, as backup. Okay. Interesting. Okay. We are going to have a special uh, with regards to pensions today. Actually, on Lagos Talks nine eight one. So oh, if you guys yeah? are interested in finding out more, Excellent. we have some extra friend com coming in. Uh, so that should be interesting. We also have a few messages coming in. Uh, Casey says, "Oh, Roma Center of Afri Invest. It's very nice to hear your voice. I missed you and your analysis. So welcome back." Nice. Um, uh, we also have this message in from Ayola on WhatsApp, who says, "How come Buhari has just been appointed chairman of ECOWAS when his tenure ends in May next year? Are they trying to preempt the outcome of the election, <laughs> guys? Come, come on now." Ayola, come, ah, come, <laughs> come on! Come on! Not I'm not even. I'm not even touching that message. Winga <laughs> Kamu says uh, Nigeria is the biggest uh, REM in West Africa, and we influence the economics of other sub regions. Except we allow Morocco to pour sand in our gari. Winga, mm, yeah. all the way from north, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, Stanley Awilewa says, I don't think Africa is right for a single currency. So many challenges, and its way of implementation, Africa needs to just keep building. Mm, mm, good point. Thank you so much uh, for your message. All right, so just real quick again, uh, it was a total of 55,038 uh, members then enrolled in various pension programs. It was up uh, by 7% from the new additions recorded in April. One thing that did point out, jump out to me though, um, as, as, as far as the newcomers that uh, of the 55,000, 36,800 were male, only 18,000 were female. So there's still quite a, a, a lopsided uh, figure there with regards to uh, the, 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 uh, the gender allocations with, uh, with pensions. Um, I remember said that we still have a very, very low pension uh, penetration rate. 80, uh, labor force is about 85 million. Uh, let's say uh, the total number of folks that enrolled in, in that enrolled in one pension or the other is about 8 million. So you're looking at just 9%. South Africa is 52% of their labor force that is enrolled. Um, even Kenya, even though it's lower, 14%, we still have a ways to go, man. I mean, we still we still have a, a, a long way to go, but I mean, there have been some steps in, in, in the right direction with the growth that we've seen. But mm. again, there's still a lot of employers that are not compliant, even some states uh, uh, as well here in Nigeria. So yeah. there's that need for, for that awareness and probably increased regulation to, to try to ensure that, that more, that, more that people are enrolled uh, for if anyone is wondering our total assets uh, I think it's is risen to 8.1 trillion. trillion yeah so that's also been 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 rising as well okay from pensions we move to SMEs uh, the AfriExim Bank and the AFDB uh, have come that's the African Development Bank they've come together to provide a $500,000 grant scheme for SMEs uh, they had nothing announced it yesterday or the day before 
Uh, the first thing that jumped out to me was, and this is across Africa, because I thought it was just Nigeria, <laughs> but this is across Africa. I almost said, isn't this the amounts? I don't know. I don't know. Lagos, what do you think? 500k dollars. That's how much is that in Naira? Uh, about 180 million. 180 million Naira for SMEs. I mean, you know, a lot of, if you think about, most of them need, what, 100k, 200, 300. Yeah, could spread around, but isn't that the amount? Isn't it a little small? It's it's it's, it's quite uh, small, uh, actually, for, for these SMEs. But going through the story, it seems like they're targeting about 20, 20 firms mm-hmm. uh, that this money will be split uh, that will be split between but I mean like you said it's it's still quite small going yeah. uh, going going across Africa because if you break that down how much is that par from me if we right. actually if we if we actually go with with, with twenty. Oh boy, okay. Well hey look every little bit helps if you're a, if you're an SME looking at that. And then still remember the SMEs are the engine of our economy, so they're the ones that push and need as much help as possible. I will continue my campaign for single digit loans, single digit interest rate loans for everybody. Oh, not just yeah. yes, yeah. I, I, I know you I can just continue campaigning. You don't have to be <laughs> <laughs> everybody needs a loan, please. Uh they are here to be and listen to this show, please, yeah. eh? So help us being, out. Being and all the banks. Please, moment, who is going though? to be given the loan that no. single digits? I'm just curious. <laughs> I, well, it has to be the banks now. Here's yes, the thing: you have MPR at fourteen percent. No bank is giving any loan at fourteen percent. Be, be, oh, oh, below that. Prime lending oh, rate from gosh. five bar is about nineteen percent. They're about to. <laughs> well, we need Come this on. money now. Me- messages, we need this messages money. Messages are flooding in. So okay. Let's go to these messages quickly. Yeah. Yinka says, talking about pensions, there's something going on in a subtle manner with the number of people heading to Canada. These persons are approaching their pension uh, guys to claim that they're out of a job. Hence, twenty five percent, twenty five percent of it, and then they jet out. Mm. What happens to the remaining seventy five percent? They grow old and probably die in Canada. Well, look, regardless of where you are, everyone said if like, you could move to Canada, Russia, wherever, you still have legal access to your, to pension, your pension once you turn uh, the retirement age. So it doesn't, doesn't, it's okay. Steady Hand says, I don't think Africa is ready for a single currency. We have other things to consider in this part of the world. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, while we've got this one in from Obadjimi Adiwali, who says, I think that what helped the pensions industry was the hard work of the regulator that ensured it yeah. was statutory for everyone to have a pension. Trust, if it wasn't statutory, a lot of Nigerians would not. Enrolled, mm, and goodness. we will think that someone wants to collect the money and whack it. <laughs> I think this should be replicated in the insurance sector, right? And um, a very true one. Well, Kamu says it's not just the enrollment, employers take pension money from workers and don't remit it to the pension fund managers. Ah. Again, true. I once worked in an organization where, for a greater part of 10 years, pension was what? not remitted. Okay, but um, P- Pencom has Report. made, yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Pencom has made a whist- they have a whistleblower thing, yeah, where you can call a phone number and then report uh, anonymously, or uh, so there's no revenge uh, on your. Your part. Who is who sent this message? <laughs> eh? Check was we'll block, from we'll block them too. this August new month thing. All right, <laughs> real quick. Uh, I've only got about a minute left. Uh, okay, let's. We've been doing corporate uh, uh, um, performance reports, finances for half year. Um, real quick, Transcorp Hotels, uh, two point two billion naira uh, profit after tax. Uh, Aroma seller, an increase from from last year. I, I'm showing they had the d- decent re- decent performance on them, yeah. Yeah, I mean from Transcorp, uh, going by statements from 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 the CEO, uh, we've seen um, increased occupancy, increased occupancy rate. I mean, going back to last year, one of the key things that affected performance of the of the hospitality industry as a whole was the FX challenges that were right. having, especially in the first quarter, because they have a lot of FX related costs. But mm. we've seen that improve. General conditions in in the economy have 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 also improved, and this has translated down to better numbers um, um, for 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 the for this company. Okay, and I also show that well, the CEO is also saying that they are trying to use tech to improve things at the hotel. If uh, they're launching some app that allows their guests to order food, check into their rooms, yeah. and do a number of things all from the simple from the palm of their hands in their phone. Uh, that makes life easier, yeah. yeah Without- and, and there was something else I read in in the statement that just made me laugh. Yeah. So, <laughs> what did you say? Well, I think the Calabar uh, one, he made a statement about also improving internet services. Oh yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> what is that? Is that gonna help? Services? <laughs> the internet <laughs> internet in Calabar is not very it's not very strong. Again, ICT. That's uh, you know we know which ministry is supposed to be handling that, right? Let's not turn it into tech. Let's not let's not turn it into Tech Friday. Um, also, Diamondback. I've got twenty seconds. Not very very impressive results on uh, their quite, end. Quite, quite poor. Uh, we have both, uh, well, top line with marginally up about 0.6%. Top line, 
gross earnings. Right, gross earnings, and, yeah. And uh, profit after tax was down about 78%. Ouch. Uh, I mean, one important thing from their results is that we saw their interest expenses rise, despite the fact that deposits were lower, which shows the increased competition for, which is as a result of increased competition for deposits mm. in, 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 in the industry. Yeah, yeah, interesting right. stuff. Okay. Uh, uh, just to round up, uh, Olao Lua up on our YouTube live stream here, Olao Lua Akeola, he says, uh, you can't blame anyone if they don't trust the system when politicians are also looking at the same fund to fund capital projects in a country where almost nothing is working. Ah, Olawa, well, thank you for, for tuning in on YouTube. Appreciate that. Erwin Selin of Afro Invest, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank and you. Uh, we'll look forward to your birthday this, this month. Eh? Yeah, hey, cake for everybody. <laughs> Guys, thanks for all your messages out there. We appreciate it. Though. All right, but do keep listening because coming up next, we've got some great music. Amy Winehouse, Lauren Hill, Gregory Porter, and so much more. And of course, at 7.30, we jump into detailed newspaper analysis inside of Freshly Press. So keep listening to Smooth Breakfast. Thank you, thank you, thank you.